What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we are having some fun doing a little Mars shot Monday. We are gonna estimate the value of what SpaceX would be if it did an initial public offering. Now, I know what you're thinking. Elon Musk's rocket company, SpaceX, one of the most cutting edge technology companies on the planet, taking us to Mars. Like, how cool is it? Um, what SpaceX is doing, just such a big fan of them. But Elon has said they never want to IPO, or at least not for a while. Elon Musk is dead set on colonizing Mars, and SpaceX is his company that he built to make that happen. This super long-term mission means Elon does not want to sacrifice going public and potentially having these short-term incentives come in and cloud the judgment of SpaceX and have them you know, potentially sacrifice that so important mission and the whole goal of the company, which is to settle uh, Mars and colonize Mars and have us expand and humanity expand into other planets, which is epic. So to focus on this mission, Elon has kept the company private and says he doesn't want to IPO for a super, super long time. But that has kind of changed recently because Starlink, the satellite internet service that SpaceX has, which a bunch of you may have even signed up for, over half a million people are already in line signing up for this service um, where Elon Musk and the SpaceX team are going to launch thousands and thousands, have already launched over 1,500 satellites in the sky, but will continue to launch thousands of them and have this global internet service. In fact, they just partnered with Google Cloud to do a deal with them. So that is totally blowing up. But right now, Starlink is part of that broader SpaceX umbrella um, and they haven't IPO'd yet. So I just thought this was a fascinating thought exercise. Like I always think SpaceX is one of the most leading private companies highly valued, biggest private companies in the world, thousands of employees. Um, how would you value SpaceX? What do you think they would be worth if they did an IPO? And then I'll explain at the end of the video why I think a lot of this matters. But the point is, up until this point, Elon Musk doesn't want anyone to own SpaceX stock. The financials aren't public. We don't know what revenue they did. We don't know what profits they did. We didn't technically know anything about the company. It's just a bunch of Googling that I did in articles and talking to friends in the industry that I've able to piece together what's up with SpaceX. So SpaceX has had a pretty interesting history of fundraising rounds um, throughout 2019. 19 and mid 2020 did a bunch of smaller fundraising rounds from about 200 to 270 per share. This is a rise from about 36 to about $55 billion in market capitalization. And then in late 2020, they did this um, sort of awesome round at basically 420 a share. I think it was 419.99, which is a $74 billion valuation um, according to the reports I read. So a significant uptick in the valuation of SpaceX most recently in December 2020. And if you're trying to buy uh, SpaceX shares in the public market, this is just rumors. But what I've been hearing, you're paying at least a uh, hundred billion or like 600 per share um, with a huge amount of carry and fees attached to that. So the value of SpaceX right now in the free free market, so to speak, I would say is intrinsically around 100, uh, 120 billion dollars are around that 100 to 120 billion range, but what would happen if they floated it in a public IPO? Um, I think this is such an interesting thought exercise because SpaceX is such a long-term company, um, but there's such a big brand, you know? Um, and, and if we want to take a step back and dissect, you know, what is SpaceX's core businesses? How much money are they actually making? The core business they do is launch, launching stuff up into the sky for governments and for different companies, even some satellite companies are their customers. They're basically like, yo, we build these awesome reusable rockets and because they're reusable, we can run them multiple missions. We can have a way better cost than Boeing or Lockheed Martin. We're disrupting the rocket game. We're going to launch all this awesome stuff into space for you. So that's a great business. And you can get people to pay for launching stuff into space. And that's just a couple billion dollars in revenue. Although we don't know SpaceX's revenue exactly, we do know that in 2018, they posted, you know, two to three billion in revenue or around that range just from the launch business. And I think that was sort of a breakout year for them. But so just reading in between the lines, it looks like this launch business is about two to three billion dollars a year, maybe four, maybe five, as they could scale it massively, but not much bigger than that. And plus, you know, all that four to five billion in revenue is not going to be profit. They actually have to launch these rockets, refurbish them, pay for all these engineers. You're not really looking at a profitable company just launching stuff up into space for other people, at least yet. So why are investors paying so much for SpaceX? Where's all the value? I think a big piece of it is that launch business could expand. And when SpaceX was a $35 billion company, okay, us scaling from, you know, a couple billion dollar launch business to five to 10 billion actually justified the valuation of the whole company there. But now Starlink went from a PowerPoint project to actually something in reality, launching thousands and thousands of satellites into the sky, having and, and right now, my estimate, and I don't want to say it, I'm pretty sure this is right on the money because I I guessed that there were 50,000 subscribers like a month or two ago. And then I kind of like got some confirmations that was right from some leaks. So I don't know. Anyway, I think they're around 50. My guess is now about 70, 75,000 um, Starlink users. 75,000 users, we're looking at about $90 million in annual revenue for Starlink already. So you can see how Starlink just getting off the ground, just in beta with a couple thousand users is quickly gonna be scaling and be crushing that launch business. And this isn't just my theory. If you actually go look back at the, uh, I, I wanna say it was a few years ago, a Wall Street Journal article leak, you can see that even SpaceX and their leaked projections showed a massive increase in their satellite Starlink internet revenue and that it would eventually overtake their launch revenue 
revenue and will be the catalyst to drive the company to profit. So SpaceX right now is this incredible technology development hub to get us to Mars. And in that crazy technology development hub develops reusable rockets, which they can use to launch this crazy satellites, which is also some crazy space tech that they have. And now that that satellite business can actually make them a ton of money, well, they continue to develop this technology to get that Mars mission forward. So, and this is another reason why Elon's so, you know, dead silent saying private because he doesn't want to compromise that. You know, if you had another CEO or another executive team or some MBAs running it, they'd be like, let's go all in on Starlink, you know, screw the development of this. We're not making money from it. So it's just so important that Elon Musk retains control of the company. But anyway, Starlink is scaling rapidly. The internet market, billions and billions of dollars, maybe even trillions of dollars. I know people have said that Starlink alone could hit a trillion dollar market cap. I think I've even said that. I think that is possible in the long run, uh, but that's sort of getting ahead of yourself. I think in the near term, Starlink scales rapidly from, you know, this $90 million revenue run rate to quickly hitting a billion, couple billion dollar revenue run rate um, in just a couple years of launch. So you look at my Starlink projections here, which I think are still, honestly, maybe, I don't know if they're on the money or not, maybe a little bit low in 2021, but still 2022, I think are on point. You can see that I have a scaling to about 25 million subscribers by the end of 2025 um, and having that monthly fee drop significantly to 65 bu bucks a month. And that gets us to $19.5 billion in recurring revenue. And that's just from 25 th uh, million people. So that's just a fraction of the global population. What is that? 3% of the global population. Yeah, I think that's right. It's like 3% of the global population that, that that's on Starlink. And, you know, this is a global service. Eventually it could extend much beyond that it has the partnership with Google. Um, you know, it's not just customer front facing contracts that this can have, which I modeled. So Starlink, and of course, as we go to Mars, we go to the moon, we're setting up all these bases. We got to stay connected. Starlink, I mean the name, right? So Starlink is actually moving the needle on significantly more financials. Like I just said, in five years from launching this business, they could scale to $20 billion in recurring revenue, maybe more than that. Um, um, this Morgan Stanley report that I saw said that uh, Tesla could eventually support like hundreds of millions of, of satellites in the sky and they could be doing 30 to 50 billion by 2025 revenue. So I don't know, this could even be low. But the point is, is SpaceX is not thinking small with this. This is a global internet service, potentially hundreds of millions of users. I'm modeling 25 million. We're still hitting 20 billion in ARR. You give that a five or 10 multiple space. You know, these are simple numbers here, but a, a 10 times multiple on that revenue is $200 billion. And so now you're like, okay, well, SpaceX at 74 billion was a deal if they own all of Starlink, which could be worth 200 billion in five years, maybe more than that. And so that's what investors were betting on. And I think that's why you saw this sort of breakout in SpaceX's valuation trajectory range was Starlink executed, investors were pricing that in. And additionally, you've had a massive surge in Tesla stock. Tesla and SpaceX were both in that 35 to 50 billion range. And then you saw Tesla appreciate to 500 billion, almost like 800 billion. Now I think they're like 600 billion, but SpaceX, you know, appreciated, but was in the private markets. And um, they, they did bump up that trajectory a little, but it's still significant underpriced according to Tesla. And I think this is evidence that if SpaceX did do an IPO, I think there would be a massive Elon Musk premium on the stock that would cause them to trade much higher than in the private markets. And that's just kind of why I wanted to make this video is I think there's so much I, the, the gap right now, like it's impossible to buy SpaceX. Like I have no idea, like, like, I, like you have to know Elon Musk and have him let buy into your company, let you be one of the funds that fund SpaceX. Um, if you want to be an investor in SpaceX, or you have to buy it in the secondary market in some super layered transaction with a bunch of fees that's extremely hard to access. It's the only two ways to get SpaceX stock. And still we've seen this massive rise. So supply and demand, if you're hugely restricting, um, you know, the demand for SpaceX shares essentially by not letting all of these people access them or buy them or even bid on them, then you're going to get a lower price. So in my opinion, there's just so many dynamics at play here. And I'd, I want to correct myself in earlier videos because I think what this all boils down to is Elon Musk control of the company. You know, for us to continue to think long term and want to settle Mars and focus on that, Elon has whoops, Elon has to be in control of the company. Elon needs to be in charge of 50% of the vote. Well, originally I'd said he owns just about 54% of the company. So, oh my gosh, like he's about to slip under that 50% mark. It looks like some people th say he may have already done that. Um, I just Googled it and it looks like as of six or eight months ago, he owns 54% of the company um, in terms of equity and 78% in terms of voting rights. But... So that's the key difference there. And I don't know this. This is just me guessing. I don't even think this is public. I don't think SpaceX wants you to know, but Elon has a higher voting control. So he could get diluted below 50% equity ownership and still make the decisions for SpaceX because of that voting control. So that makes me feel way better. And it's like, oh, okay, well then there's not that much pressure on changing the valuation trajectory. SpaceX has a system. They know who their investors are. They built their own secondary market so employees can get liquidity. They don't need to mess with what they're doing and change the system because they already have this programmed out. And it's this almost beautiful math equation where if SpaceX's valuation 
population increases at this certain rate, it can raise enough capital. And every time, you know, SpaceX get bigger, and you know, this whole Starlink thing is going to change everything, which I'm going to get to in a sec. But essentially, Elon Musk is, I'm assuming that he's totally programmed this out. So he will control 50% of the voting stock, even assuming a drawdown, even assuming 10 or 20 billion more in capital raised. Um, and yet you can just see it going beautifully. Like you see the valuation stepping up, you see him still having a huge buffer of 20% of the voting control. So I think this is, what the way this company is set up, the way he's raising capital is genius and such a unique case study in so many ways If he's sacrificing maybe a little bit of dilution for privacy and easiness to raise capital and just less scrutiny um, and, and more secrecy. And I don't know, I'd argue that's working because the end goal of him maintaining control and SpaceX getting the capital they need is working and he's still got a buffer. So I'd say he's killing it there, which is great news for all of us who wanna want be Martians or whatever. And th the flip side of this is, um, now SpaceX is at this crazy one runaway point where they may never, they may not need a lot of capital because Starlink is going to generate so much cash for them. And the genius part that changed in the SpaceX boardroom, or at least my understanding is, is instead of them owning Starlink outright and saying, we're going to wait for all that cash to come in from Starlink and start paying for stuff as it makes money. No, we can get cash ahead of time from Starlink before that business even works by IPOing it and selling that equity and basically selling the equity for the discounted future cash flows. So we don't have to wait for Starlink to generate cash flow. We and securitize that, at least a portion of that cash flow, get it up front to minimize dilution and to accelerate this development of technology for Mars. So I think this it's, it's genius what they're doing right now and taking advantage of, let's not take the 20 billion in revenue, let's take a 10 times multiple on that. And SpaceX slash Starlink, they could, you know, SpaceX owns Starlink, they could sell just 10% of Starlink at $25 billion and raise $2.5 billion. That's a huge funding round for SpaceX. So you see really, really quickly, once Starlink hits the 10, 15, 20 billion dollar valuation range, it becomes a massive game-changing ATM for core SpaceX, practically funding all of its needs and more. And, and so, I don't know, SpaceX probably does have a lot of crazy ambitious stuff that they would do if they had more capital, which is awesome that Starlink will give them that. So I don't want to say they're going to be like making a ton of money and will never need to raise after that. But um, this is just going to be a game-changing step. And so you factor in all of this, and let's get back to the original question here, which is what would SpaceX trade for if you could buy it in the free market? Because it would be such an interesting financial situation. You know Starlink is executing. It's only at 90 million revenue now, but it's working. It's de-risked. It's scaling rapidly. This has the potential to be 20, 30, 40, 50 billion dollar business in, you know, just a handful of quarters and so, or years. And so, I don't know. I think the option of ownership of Starlink outright is worth at least a hundred billion dollars. I don't know. I, that sounds ridiculous as I say it because only has 90 million in revenue, but I don't know. Because originally I tweeted that I think SpaceX would IPO for $420 billion. And I actually do think that's what it would be, but that would be so insanely stretched over the valuation. And it's not like it has FSD, which is going to be this insane cash flow lever to pull to justify that valuation. Yes, they have Starlink, but I don't think that will be to the same degree as quickly. Honestly, maybe I scratch that. Maybe Starlink is SpaceX's FSD. Um, and that is what generates all the value up front. But I just have to think that one of the greatest forcing functions for innovation is going to space, going to Mars, you know, building a rocket, building this humanity on Mars. How many new technologies will you develop that you can use on Earth that you don't just sell to the million people on Mars, but the 8 billion people back on this planet? So I think SpaceX should be looked at as this incredible R&D hub for technologies that is sort of has this uncapped potential of, uh, you know, what we do as a spacefaring civilization. And you see the first dividend of that uh, you know, R&D hub is Starlink and how amazing it's going to be for the crypto markets, how it's going to give everybody internet access, how it's going to make education so much better, how it's going to make connectivity awesome, how it's going to become this massive business. So it's going to make the world better and it's going to generate huge shareholder value. And that's just one little technology spinoff that SpaceX has. So, you know, launch was just getting SpaceX off the ground. That'll never really be how they make all the money and generate that huge valuation when they IPO. Um, but so the question is, do you value them just on Starlink with a little launch? And how many of these extra sort of in the bag inventions that are worth who knows how many billions does SpaceX have? And that sort of uncapped, you know, call option on the greatest innovator of our era, Elon Musk, I think justifies a massive innovation premium on the equity price. And that's why when I said 420 billion, like you combine this massive global brand that is SpaceX, this massive will for this at least piece of humanity who wants to go to Mars and you use and the, the vision, the person Elon Musk behind it and the idea that yes, we have multi-trillion dollar companies, you know, if, if Apple can sell the f computer in our pocket for $2 trillion, think about the computer that takes us to other planets or I wanted to rant about SpaceX with y'all because this is something I think about awesome. And I just think it's a super funny brain teaser of SpaceX won't IPO in the near term, but if they were going to IPO, I think they would like, oh, it's my friends here. 
But if they were gonna IPO, I think they would like double or triple their valuation um, from the current 100 billion at least to two to 300 billion. And my gut just says 420 when it hits the market because I don't know, that's just some Elon Musk stuff. But anyway, this is Hyperchange. Would love to uh, know what you think in the comments below. What are your thoughts? If SpaceX were to IPO, take a guess. I wanna know all your schemes about SpaceX. What is the next business after launch? And Starlink, leave it in the comments. This is Hyperchange. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.